Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. Before you keep watching, please uh, make sure to leave a like and maybe subscribe. So for this video, I'm going to be redesigning this character. Now originally this character was just one that I made back in my gotcha era. <laughs> in uh, gotcha club I think it was. Yeah, gotcha club. And I've always loved the design. Even after I quit playing, I still thought of her design all the time. You know, I thought she had great potential for her character. And so I decided earlier today, well, why not, you know, do it. <laughs> so I'm actually going to add her to one of my already, uh, story, one of my stories that I already have that I'm working on. Uh, she's going to be a friend of the main character, Draven, Draven Hyde, and in his story, he is, you know, all over animatronics and mechanical stuff and, you know, he's just a geek and an engineer. And she's going to be the same way, except take out the crazy part. <laughs> so how I plan on introducing her to the story is, you know, she's a friend of Draven's brother who is way more outgoing, he's a few years older, and, you know, he gets around and he knows people, and he finds her and decides, you know what, hey, you would be good friends with my brother. And so he was like, he just introduced the two, and it worked out. You know, they hit it off, and so that's how they meet, because originally I was going to have Draven just be, you know, lonely by himself, zero friends, but I don't think that really suits him, you know? He's a kind person, and he loves to try and talk to people, but he has some trauma, of course. Who doesn't give all their OCs trauma? <laughs> so I think it made more sense to, you know, give him someone to go with. And so she is now going to be his best friend, who's, you know, I would say his engineering buddy, something like that. She probably won't play a huge role in the story, but she'll be mentioned and shown. But, so, I already liked her original design, so I didn't think I needed to change much. So... I kept pretty much all the stuff from her original design. I just drew it in my style pretty much. But I changed her glasses a bit though because I didn't want them to look a little too nerdy. So I ended up switching up that style. Um, I also decided to just, you know, my, uh, I would say my New Year's resolution was to try not to cut as many corners in my artworks and be more detailed. So I've started using thinner line art, as you can see here. And, you know, I used to accidentally leave some parts of the sketch out or I would just leave open spots in the coloring and I'm trying not to do that. <laughs> of course, that's going to take a little while, but, you know, the one bad thing about doing line art like this is just, you know, it's really thin, so I can't use the bucket tool on most parts, which makes the coloring really difficult. You know, because I have to do all the really tiny parts. But I just, I do like doing the line art, but the coloring is not too fun. So, this recording. Um, I shortened it down to about 18 minutes and 30 seconds, but the whole, before I shortened it and sped it up, <laughs> it was about four hours of footage, split between two days and five different recordings. <laughs> but I think it all ended up working pretty well together. Of course, I decided to do this in the middle of class, so that did not make it any easier at all, but, you know, I think I, I ended up getting there in the end. <laughs> also, I'm sorry for the bad quality 
I'm just recording my voice off of my tablet on a random app that I found. Um, you know, it was just one of those apps that was already downloaded and I just found it, so the audio quality is not the greatest. <laughs> And I can't use my headphones because they don't have a mic on them. So I apologize for that. But I still hope, you know, you find this entertaining, I guess? I don't really know. I'm brand new to this type of stuff, so, you know, any tips on how to make better videos would 100% be appreciated in the comments. And also, you know, any art tips as well. Because I always love getting um, criticism for my art, constructive criticism. <laughs> you know, don't, just don't be mean about it, you know, just don't be like, well, your coloring sucks, you should do this instead, you know? Just, you know, stuff like, um, well, instead of coloring like this, you could also color like this. Because I think coloring is definitely my weak point. I'm not the greatest at it, but yeah, just any tips in the comments on, you know, making videos or drawing or anything like that. Also, um, in the description, there will be a uh, invite link to my server, my Discord server, so feel free to join. It is brand new, so there's not too much activity, but we just recently got a few members for my promotion videos, so... It's been a little more lively. <laughs> You'll find me posting work in progress arts, finished arts, and stuff that I probably won't be posting anywhere else because of the content. Um, so yeah, um, and there will also be a link to my Skechers United profile, which is where I post like 99% of my art. I have, I think, over 500 posts on there from the past two years, so um, if you'd like to go check that out, that would be cool. I just reached 200 followers, so next goal is 250. <laughs> I still need to work on the DTIOIS for that. Anyways, um, I think the hardest thing for me to color is definite, or not color, but render his hair because I've tried so many different styles and all of them just look so weird I think it ended I think it turned out okay in this drawing but you know I think it could definitely be way better so tips on that would especially be appreciated and to anyone who comments I will you know if I can I will reply to all the comments just saying thank you for watching and stuff like that so um, also I didn't even realize but recently I hit over 120 subscribers <laughs> it, that's kind of crazy because <laughs> I tried a channel before and I didn't get even 10 subscribers for like a whole year so to be getting over a hundred in just a few months that is insane to me so thank you so much for that um and i guess i could do a hundred subscriber special or something like that um if y'all want but i'm not really sure what i would do i guess i could host you know a draw this in your style challenge or something like that you know just a basic art challenge since my channel is centered around art but also, I heard somewhere that I'm ruining my art by using a white background when I color. And I think that could be true in some cases, but I don't think that's true in mine. Because I end up using overlay layers and hue layers on every single one of my pieces. So all the colors come together in the end anyways. <laughs> So I think it kind of just depends on how you render and color and all that. I usually just use base colors and then go over it, um, you know, with all the rendering stuff. And then after, after I'm done with the whole drawing, including the background and all that, I'll put an overlay layer with one of the colors from the drawing 
to kind of bring all the colors together, you know? It's like a unifying color. <laughs> so, I didn't really take that advice because I don't think it really applies to mine. I guess it could in some sense, but the only reason you'll see me changing the background color like I just did um, is so that I can see if I colored outside the lines or not. But right after that I change it right back to white. Also, I love rendering skin now because of this um, brush that I found on Sketches United from someone that I follow. And it is the best rendering brush I have ever used. I love it so much. Um, I forget what it's called, but I'll find it. And while I'm editing, I'll see if I can, you know, put it up there so y'all can try it if you want. Also, if you haven't noticed yet, the program I use is Ibis Paint, so it is an Ibis Paint brush. <laughs> so, but, yeah, there are a bunch of good people to follow on Sketchers United, you know. If you do end up getting it, um, or you already have it, please go support all the other artists that are on that app. Because there are so many who I have taken so much inspiration from. <laughs> You know, I've stolen their art styles countless times. <laughs> uh, I actually recently tried uh, someone that I followed. Their art is amazing. I love their art. It's so expressive and colorful. Um, their name is Meep Sauce on Sketches United. Definitely go give them a follow because their art is just amazing. I tried to draw like them in one of my recent videos, but I honestly didn't do too great, so I might attempt it again, um, and I'm not even sure if I'll make it into a whole series yet. I plan to, but now I'm not quite sure, so uh, let me know if you would like to see that too. Um, also, give any ideas for future videos and stuff like that are also appreciated because I don't really know what I'm doing right now. Uh, right now I'm pretty much just taking you know, any art that I made or any fun games that I've played and I'm just recording that and slapping, a mu uh, slapping some music on there and posting it. So you know, I think it would be nice to have some actual ideas. I do have one video that I'm working on right now, and it's tips from some, it's tips from an artist who doesn't even know what they're doing, pretty much. That's not going to be the exact title, but it'll be pretty close. <laughs> but I've already got all my tips down and all that, so I just need to get the drawings together and edit it and do all that. Um, that might be up in the next two months, maybe. I'm not really sure when it's, you know, how long it's going to take. So just keep an eye out for that. <laughs> and let me know uh, what you think. So I'm almost done with the rendering here. Um, the rendering is actually pretty easy since I'm just using the same brush. But, you know. It's basically just layering light colors, like a lighter shade of the base color, and then a darker shade around the edges of it, uh, like I did with the shirt and all that. But, and I always, whenever I use this brush, if you do end up using it, I like to keep it at 59% opacity. Uh, you shouldn't really use it at 100 or else it'll end up looking really muddy. So I think 59 or 60 is like, you know, the perfect balance <laughs> for this brush. So uh, yeah, rendering has become way easier with this brush. So yeah, it's a really good brush. I definitely recommend it. Again, I will try my best to remember to put the QR code uh, up on the screen so you can screenshot it and add it to your brush collection. <laughs> So I wasn't really sure what I was doing with the hair here. I was just kind of going for it. And as you can see, I cut corners by not doing all the shading. 
So for all my um, normal shading, I always use the same exact purple color. You know, it's a very nice desaturated purple. You know, it's not too bright, it's not too dark. You know, it's, it's just a good purple. <laughs> But I use it in every single one of my drawings. You know, there's a very rare chance that I don't. And that's only if I'm trying to make a drawing like extremely vibrant or stick to one color. Like I did a drawing uh, about a year ago and I tried to make it really pink. So I ended up shading with a uh, redder pink instead of my normal purple. Which felt really weird, but I think it turned out pretty good. So. I just do basic shading. I don't really worry about where the where the uh, source of light is coming from because you know I didn't really plan out this drawing. Actually, I kind of just was in the moment. I kind of just went for it. So I was just you know going with the flow pretty much. So I was just doing basic shading. You know, just putting light areas in places that weren't covered in shadow and stuff like that. <laughs> but, so, shading and all that is pretty fun, I think. Because, you know, you've already got all the base layers done and all the other rendering. And all you do is just slap a multiply layer on top. And I like to blur it a bit when I do it on the skin, just to make it look a bit softer. But then on clothes and stuff, I like to keep it, um, I don't like to blur it, to, just to make it look, you know, not as soft. If I was doing like, you know, a really soft dress or like pajamas or something along those lines, then I would blur it a tiny bit. But with normal clothing, I don't blur it at all. If I do, it's like not even noticeable at all. And for this, uh, background I had no clue what I was doing I kind of was going for like a computer feel you know like you see the really techie characters with a bunch of computer screens and stuff around them that was kind of the feel I was going for but I was not sure at all and I ended up using that overlay layer to make it look more orange to match the character and you know just doing some Coloring on the liner, I think, it just makes the drawing look so much nicer. Um, I think the black lines just make it look a bit too bold. But, you know, having a... I usually go for wherever I did the shading and rendering, and then I'll make it a little bit darker. That way, you know, it still stands out, but it also doesn't blend in with the rest of the colors. And it takes a little bit, but not too long. And it's pretty fun. So, again, back, any advice for drawing backgrounds is greatly, like, greatly appreciated. <laughs> because I do not know how to draw backgrounds at all. So, <laughs> and there's me hiding my little signature. And here's the finished result. I hope you liked it, and remember to like and subscribe. And, you know, maybe give me some advice for future videos. Thank you!